All right. Hey, everybody. Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy. Welcome back to Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. So tonight we are going to talk about um, the question was asked from Cheyenne McEldery from our Facebook page. And, and Cheyenne wants to know what kinds of things that are out of your control um, do you find most affect elk vocalization during the rut and at different times during September? So, you know, there's quite a few factors that can, you know, affect elk behavior, elk vocalizations. Um, a few of them like number of people in the woods, hunting pressure. Um, you know, some will say that's something out of our control because we can't uh, control the number of people that go to the woods. But in reality, we can control that situation. If you've got a lot of people that are hunting the same area you are, move move to an area with less people. So you have that control. You don't have to stay there with all those people. Um, you know, one thing that we do, uh, you know, we, we have a center camp and then we have all different trailheads that, you know, we'll drive to um, and hit different mornings. But if we get to a trailhead and there's already a vehicle there, <clears throat> we just keep going. Um, one, we don't want to, I, I mean, they got there first, good for them. We don't want to ruin their hunt or bump them, but on vice versa, you know, we don't necessarily want to go there in there with them where they're going to affect our hunt as well. So, um, you know, some of the things that are out of our control, um, moon phase, you know, full moon. Um, I hear from a lot of people that with full moon, oh, it's a lousy time to hunt. Elk are only active in the morning and in the evening, right at last light and first light. And, you know, most of the time they just go back to camp during the middle of the day. Uh, yes, elk do go to bed early because uh, they've been pretty active all night long during a full moon. But the only thing is, is they go to bed early and then they kind of get rambunctious. You know, they've been laying down for a while. It's almost like trying to keep a toddler still for four, five, six hours. It, it doesn't happen. Also, that bull is going to get up and he's going to want to check his cows because, you know, he's, he's constantly checking them to see if they're coming into cycles. So even though they go to bed early, there's a good chance during the middle of the day, they're going to get up and move around, maybe go to water. So, you know, stay out there. Um, <clears throat> forest fires, <clears throat> you know, animals are used to forest fires they will actually move out of the way of a forest fire and then they'll be right back in there once it cools down, once the fire kind of goes through. Um, <clears throat> especially if a fire burns hot enough, that ash and that heat will get a lot of plush grass starting to grow. So, you know, those, those elk definitely um, go back into old burns. Now, depending on how big and how severe the forest fire is, it could push them out of the drainage and on into the next drainage over a couple of drainages. So forest fires definitely can move them. Weather systems. Elk are just like any other animal. They can feel the change in the barometric pressure. So when they feel that storm coming in, um, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna feed. Um, they don't know how long that storm system is going to last, how long it's going to be down. So they're going to feed. And then once the system hits, they're typically going to go to some thicker timber. Um, so each, each, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different in each place. So in your area, you're going to have to find where there's some um, thicker timber. And if it's an area that you've hunted for a while, you, you know, this spot, good indication is, you know, that storm system a lot of times brings some pretty good winds. And, you know, we, we look for those places to get out of those storms. Well, elk do too, you know, they, they get out of the wind, out of that weather. Um, you know, they, they want to be safe. But the one thing about wind is, you know, one of the, one of the survival tactics that elk have is, is their eyes. And when you have a constant wind with a lot of things moving, it can be kind of hard to focus on movement within the trees. And so, you know, they're, they're used to really watching out for movement for signs of a predator or this or that. And if it's really, really windy, there is so much movement. They have a hard time focusing on, on some of that stuff. So um, let's see what else. 
hot weather. Absolutely. Hot weather will really cut down on the movement of elk. Um, you know, cause elk have to regulate uh, a, a certain temp. They can't get too hot because if they get too hot, basically they'll have a stroke, they'll die. So that's, that's why hot weather, their movements really shut down. So early in the season when it's a hotter, that's why you see a lot more movement in the first morning or in the evening when those temps are, you know, quite a bit lower. Um, <clears throat> also why early on during that uh, hot part of the day, um, Tim, I don't move as much in hot weather either. I don't think any of us do actually, Tim. Um, <clears throat> hot weather shuts us all down, but you know, elk especially, that's why wallows, ponds, you know, you'll, you'll see elk a lot of times, um, you know, go lay in those wallows to regulate their temperature, wade into the water of a pond just to cool themselves off and help regulate that temp. So, all right. Um, other things that affect predators, obviously. Um, you know, if you were in an area the day before and there was a lot of vocal activity, especially in some of the Western states that have wolves, a lot of vocal activity of elk will attract wolves if they're in the area. Um, you know, wolves love feeding on elk. So, um, if predators get in the area, you'll know because the forest turns really, really quiet. It's not just that the elk go silent, but all animals. You won't hear birds running around. You really won't hear squirrels chirping. It just gets really, really, really quiet. So predators can definitely um, affect the elk's vocalization and their movement as well. They you know, they, they may be heading to a certain bedding area, but, you know, sense, sense dangers, sense a predator ahead of them and, and move to a different area to just avoid that. So one other thing that I've noticed is the barometric pressure. It seems like when the barometric pressure is, is up above 40, um, the elk just don't bugle very well. Um, you know, a lot of times what you'll see in that high barometric pressure is really, really heavy air. And you can you can tell that you're in heavy air when you let out a bugle and there is absolutely no echo. Um, I don't know, you know, really what it is, but just from my experience, if I've been in areas and called in that heavy air and not had that echo, not had that expansion, I just don't get responses. But what's crazy is you can go up over the ridge and drop into the next drainage and your bugle's echoing great and bulls are, bulls are singing in that drainage. So I do keep track of um, barometric pressure when I'm out hunting because, you know, that, that pressure change can tell me a lot. Uh, I can tell if there's a weather front coming in, um, you know, different, different things like that. Um, so while I'm out hunting, I'm definitely checking the barometric pressure. I'm checking, you know, the weather forecast to see what the next few days are doing. Um, cause especially if I see a front coming in that I know the barometric pressure is changing and the winds are going to, you know, pick up, that's going to kind of give me an idea of where I want to head. Maybe I have a plan for the next morning, but when I see that, I'm going to change. So uh, do you have a barometric sweet spot? If so, do you think elevation affects this? You, you know, pretty much, <clears throat> Tim, if that uh, if that barometric pressure is down below 40, 39 or so, maybe even dipping down into 38, uh, I've seen pretty good activity when that barometric drops down. As far as elevation, um, I've seen some changes in barometric pressure from going low to high. Um, you know, on, on the ridge or getting higher up. So you, you certainly can, you, you know, change because sometimes you get into situations where you get some air trapped down in the bottom of a draw, um, almost like a slight inversion. But as soon as you climb a little bit, um, you know, all those factors kind of change a little bit. So um, let's see, any other factors that may a fact. I mean, those those are really the big ones. Um, you know, hunting pressure, moon phase, temperature, barometric pressure, predators. Um, now, the thing is, is is yes, we are out there. We are predators also. 
Um, <clears throat> so you get a lot of people, you know, also, um, if you've got a lot of people that are, that are calling and doing a ton of calling that just doesn't fit the situation, doesn't fit. It, it just doesn't seem real. Um, I've, I've seen out kind of shut down, um, in that one. Oh, a big one. Sorry guys, four wheelers and side by sides. You can hear those things coming from a long ways away. If you have an opportunity to go out to where you can set up and watch some animals, whether it's deer or elk, that's close by a four wheeler trail or an old road, just sit there for a while and watch them. As soon as you hear a four wheeler or a side by side or something come around that first corner, as soon as soon as you can hear it, watch the animals, see how they react. I, I've actually in the past been, you know, 100, 150 yards above a road um, just because I, I heard a bull the night before, went in there the next morning, started working this bull. And, and you know, we're, we're less than 200 yards above this road and heard a couple of four wheelers come around the corner and they stopped right down below us. And the two guys were just talking normal. They were like, Hey, what do you think? Do you think this is a good place to bugle? And man, you know what? There used to be a lot of elk in here. And then, you know, they bugle a couple of times and they're talking in between bugles. And as soon as heard that four wheeler, that bull that I was working just went absolutely quiet. He didn't say a peep. And I, I just sat up there just, you know, listening to these guys. And then they jumped on the four wheeler, started it up, off they rode. And once they got far enough out that I couldn't hear that four wheeler anymore, um, I waited just a few minutes and then I went ahead and engaged that bull and he lit right back up. He didn't go anywhere. He stayed right there. He just went quiet. So um, four wheelers, ATVs, anything like that definitely has an effect. It, it, it may not necessarily push the animals out of that hillside that that they're on but if there's a ton of traffic a ton of four wheelers going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth yeah they probably will go up over the top and move away from that trail but you guys might actually be surprised how many elk hang out next to trails and in in roads it's it's truly truly amazing um you know i think part of it has to do like i said here in idaho with the wolves um other Western states here, I, I, I think those elk know that if they hang out close by um, the road, that that you know those wolves necessarily aren't going to come too close, especially in an area that you know the season's open and they've been shot at a time or two. So um, some elk kind of kind of figure those. There's not a ton of numbers that hang out kind of close to roads or trails, but there certainly is. You, you can certainly find small pockets of them and. And I bet when you guys do, you'll be amazed about how close to the road you find those. So, all right. Well, I'm checking other things here to make sure we got everything covered. Does anybody else have any questions? Go ahead and you can put them in the uh, chat and we'll go ahead and answer them right now. If not, you can wait until after uh, we shut down this live event, put your questions and we'll add them on to um, the list. And so Cheyenne, do this real quick. So tonight's episode is um, sponsored by Native by Carlton. So Cheyenne, uh, send me a message. Uh, let me get your address and I will send you out a couple of the new Rip It reads in the, from Native by Carlton. So, all right, guys, I'm not seeing any questions popping in. So, hey, thanks for tuning in tonight, guys. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it around this time every every Wednesday. It just depends how many lessons and whatnot I have, um, but try to keep this a little more consistent. Friday, Friday's video coming in. Um, we did a little episode with um, Shane Mowry from Bone Maniacs, and we kind of talked about Obsession Bows. So if you guys aren't familiar with Obsession, tune in. Uh, Friday, that video will go live and find out a little bit about Obsession Bows. So all right, guys, again, thanks for tuning in. As always, keep calling, keep practicing, but most importantly, have fun. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Q&A brought to you by Elk Calling Academy. Have a great night, guys.